know, out here, legends aren't born. They're made in the heat of battle, and this one's as big as the desert sky. Seemed inevitable, really, this showdown in the desert. Been brewing for quite a spell, and neither one has lost a showdown all season. So it had to come down to this. And guess who's ready to finally get it on? Rumbling out of the Nebraska Plains come the Cornhuskers, led by Tommy Frazier and his running mate, Simon Green, and Lawrence Phillips. They are this year's flag bearers of the Nebraska legacy and the national title. Driven by the steady hand of Tom Osborne, who's not only read the book, he's seen the movie. But swooping out of that desert sky, the high-flying attack of Florida's Danny Warfel and his sure-handed targets, Chris Doring and Ike Hilliard. This high-stakes game is new to the Gators, but they figure to go right for the gold up in those hills. Tonight, when the dust settles on this one, we'll finally know who's number one. the sun sets on this college football season, we welcome you to a fan's dream. Two unbeaten teams. Number one, Nebraska, the reigning national champion, versus number two, Florida. Folks, we are about to witness the crowning of a true national champion right here at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. And they've come from Nebraska, places like Shadron, Omaha, and Lincoln. And they've come from Florida, Bradenton, Jacksonville, and of course, Gainesville, to cheer on their beloved teams. And if you're a little excited, well, so are we. Because like the great Phoenix tonight, right before our very eyes, one team will rise above them all. Hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien. And from all of us at CBS Sports, we wish you a happy new year and welcome you to the Four Tours pregame show. Tonight, a game so big, the winner gets two trophies, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl and the Bowl Alliance's Great Games trophies, and more importantly, college football's undisputed championship. Joining us is the current New York Jets quarterback, Boomer Esiason, and Boomer, the understatement of the year, two offensive powerhouses. Well, two distinct differences here. Nebraska loves to put the ball on the ground. They like to rush, averaging 400 yards a game on the ground. Conversely, Florida's fun and gun. Danny Werfield responsible for 35 touchdown passes and almost 400 yards a game in passing. It's a great scene out here. You know, a month ago, Florida won the SEC, and afterwards, in the locker room, we heard the words, you are going to the big bowl game. One more chance for another championship. One more to go. Woo! January 2nd at the Toast yeah. Eaters. Yeah. Meantime, Gator coach Steve Spurrier is answering the critics who suggest his offense is just Sandlot football brought to the big time. That's probably a compliment if they, if they say that because uh, you can always uh, probably learn something from uh, the Sandlot and uh, and really, the, our offense is pretty simple. I guess back when we were playing uh, down at Qantas Park in Johnson City, if a guy played way deep, you'd say, go down there and hook up in front of him, and I'll hit you. And if he's playing tight, say, I'll, I'll run behind him and throw it down there. And, and really, that's, uh, that's what throwing the ball is. If they play off, you throw in front. If they play tight, try to throw it over their head. Uh, that's, heck, that's what we try to do. A lot of people have asked, uh, how come uh, if that offense is so good, why didn't somebody go down there and copy it? Well, uh, same thing with the 49er offense. People try to copy it, but you can't really copy coaches. Uh, I think uh, individually, the personality of the coach has to go into whatever he's trying to teach his team. And, and that's the reason. We have coaches from all over the country come down here every spring. Uh, there's the tapes. That's what we do. Go look at it. And they all look at them. Oh, I like this play. I like that play. And then you see them play the next year. They don't run those plays. They, 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 it doesn't work for them for some reason or another. Well, there he is. And, Boomer, it's not exactly go down to the tree and turn right, right? I think Coach Spurrier is understating it a little bit. It's a high-flying attack. It's very sophisticated. You have to have confidence in your quarterback, and you cannot duplicate it by going down there. You have to believe in the system. You have to have the guts and the confidence to run it, and certainly Coach Spurrier has that. He's looking at that pent-up energy down there. Defending national champion Nebraska just keeps rolling. They've won 24 in a row and have a chance to become the first team to win back-to-back -back championships in 16 years. But there was controversy. A number of 
off the field incidents, including one involving that man right there, star running back Lawrence Phillips, who pleaded no contest to assaulting his former girlfriend. Nebraska coach Osborne originally suspended Phillips, then reinstated him, and now has named him the starting eye back for tonight's game. It has forced a conversation that has little to do with football, but a lot to do with character. I spoke with Phillips, and I asked him when he thought the attention would stop. Uh, I don't think I don't think there's anything I can do personally. I think that uh, media is going to do what they have. I mean, whatever. I think this, those type of stories sell papers. People like to hear about people who are high up, uh, kind of get uh, getting cut down. So I, that's the type of stuff sells. So I think the media is going to keep writing about it. But you understand why the stories are there. I mean, I, you have been, you know, accused of something. Of, yeah. yeah. You understand that part. Yep. Do you think you got anybody else might have in Lincoln, Nebraska? No, nah, I don't think so. Another African-American in Lincoln, Nebraska would have had the same sentence, you think? Uh, I believe so. I believe that uh, he would have had to just go to court and that would have been it. And he would have had to deal with a lot of other things that I had to deal with. I heard you say that you learned to control your anger in 95. How did you do that? Just by uh, going to counseling and just uh, getting advice from them and how to, how to control it, talking about things. and, and uh, basically just learn how to talk things out. How are you going to decide on whether to go to the NFL? Well, there's a lot of things, uh, performance in this game, talking to the NFL committee and, and uh, finding out where they think I'll go, talking to foster parents, what they think, and stuff like that. Truth be told, that man right there, Tom Osborne, has actually welcomed the opportunity to talk candidly about this incident, saying the truth never hurts. He acknowledges his team's problems, but always emphasizes its successes. Well, I, I would hope uh, that, that uh, the test of time would show that we've run a good program. You know, I've been there 33 years. We've never had a major NCAA uh, uh, problem of any kind. We've never missed a game on TV or a bowl game or anything. And so we've had a good reputation that way. Academically, we've done well. We had an 85% graduation rate, one of the top six in the CFA. And this year's rate will be about the same. We've had 45 academic All-Americans. The next school is 35 nationally. And, so we hope we've done some good things and uh, won't just be remembered for uh, four or five incidents over a period of four years. The Lawrence Phillips thing, um, do you feel like it's at this point overshadowing uh, some of your other accomplishments that just continues to be brought up? Well, I, I don't feel that way personally and I certainly hope not. I think Lawrence has uh, done everything we ask him to do and uh, you know there's two approaches. One, you can you can abandon people, you can jettison them, and, uh, and some people think you need to send a message that way. And the other, the other way you deal with it is to uh, have them own up to what they did, to take responsibility for their actions, and then do some things to correct uh, the behavior. And in Lawrence's case, I felt that he did have a problem with anger, and he really needed to address it, and uh, he's done that. And uh, so we're really pleased with his response, and how people perceive it, we can't control. Yeah. You're such a strong figure in Lincoln. Uh, a lot of, I don't know if it's criticism, but a lot of talk has been through all this and through some of the other players, is that you have been sort of above the law, that you've taken the law into your own hands. You've heard. Uh -huh. I've not interfered with any witnesses. I haven't gone out on the streets and tried to find people. Whoever's talked to me has come to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I don't feel at all that I'm above the law. I'm subject to the same scrutiny, same laws as everyone else. And uh, sometimes uh, what the criminal justice system does is not really uh, uh, in the same line of thinking what you have to do as a coach. And uh, so we want our players to take responsibility, want them to make changes, want them to be good citizens. But uh, if, you, if you let the criminal justice system run its course, sometimes you're tying things up for two and three and four years. And uh, maybe that says something about the criminal justice system. On to football. When we come back, we'll meet the quarterbacks as we roll on live from Sun Devil Stadium. Stay with us. CBS Sports presentation of the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl is sponsored by Burger King. And weather to envy. 58 degrees at game time. The wind at 7 miles an hour. Boomer, no factor, right? No factor whatsoever. You know, the Cornhuskers are the reigning national champions, and they are appearing in their third consecutive national title game. Much of the credit for this remarkable success goes to their versatile quarterback, Tommy Frazier. And Boomer asked him how all that championship game experience might give the Huskers the edge tonight. I think there's an edge. I think because we know what to expect. We know how to handle all the big game hype. I don't think they really know what's 
what's ahead of them until actually game time. They're going. I feel they're gonna come out a little nervous. But who knows? They might. Their coach might do a fine job in keeping them relaxed. But I know one thing that Nebraska's gonna be relaxed because we know what it takes to win. And we're gonna ask Boomer as part of our network MCI. That's how to show us how Fraser runs the Husker offense. Boomer, it's all yours. Well, Pat, this is how he is the most versatile player in college football today. He does it with his legs and he does it with his arms. And you'll see right here he lines up and he will fake a pitch to Amon Green and then his tight ends will come underneath. And as Tommy rolls away, you will see that he will have to make the decision as to which tight end to throw it to. Tommy not only does this with his arm, but when they run their triple option, he has to decide whether or not to keep it or run with it. You know, he has been responsible for 31 TDs this season, 17 passing and 14 rushing. I have to get you one of those toys for your home there. <laughs> you know, Tommy Frazier can make the Nebraska offense sing, but the Gators' Danny Warfel and his favorite target, Chris Doring, also make beautiful music together. Hey, welcome back, friends. It's your good friend Chris Doring here with Danny Warfel. Uh, today we're going to do a little musical harmonizing. Hello. Danny plans to harmonize with his team on the field, but it won't always be do re me. Let me ask you about the Nebraska defense. Uh, obviously, their pass rush is better than it has been in past years. They got better defensive backs back there. And they, from what I understand, they see that you have taken some kind of a beating this year. You know, what do you expect from them? You know, if I were a linebacker or a blitzing linebacker and I'd seen the last few tapes, I'd be pretty excited to be, <laughs> be going in there. A lot of these guys are coming clean, but, you know, like always, we'll, we'll do our best to, to fix that. But, you know, when you can get a, a receiver one-on-one -on -one and get him the ball real quick, we've had success with that. So I understand that sometimes you're going to take your pops and it's got to be tough and get up. I'm sure you know about that. <laughs> yeah, I know about it all too well, let me tell you. <laughs> but let me ask you one other thing. I've actually read where you have spoken about Andre, your roommate from Poland, teaching you about chess and how you've kind of likened it to your offense versus a defense. Well, you know, a lot of people just see football as a bunch of big guys running in each other and, and they, don't, they don't understand how complex it is. I'm sure, sure you know those, those of us around football understand it, but in Spurs offense, a lot of times I, I feel like it's a chess match because you're up there and, and you're with the defensive coordinator and they've got their schemes and you've got your schemes and, and you don't, don't quite know what they're going to do, so you, you'll try a little play here and see what they do and then you'll try a little play and try to you know, act and then counteract and, and right on down the board. Singing act was not exactly Hootie and the Blowfish. No, it was more like Wayne's world, but absolutely when he's <laughs> on the field, it's a world that any quarterback would desire to be in. You know, Danny Werfel threw 35 touchdown passes in 11 games this year. That's an astro astronomical number. He actually led the nation in that category. He fits in so perfectly to Steve Spurrier's fun and gun offense. Well, he looks nervous, huh? <laughs> when we come back, we'll have a visit from the Cause, and that's not him. Bill Cosby, who's been poking around Sun Devil Stadium, that's not him either. Stick with it. Welcome back to the Ford Tours pregame show. And the crowd is going wild early for the Air Force Academy Wings of Blue. But a tough crowd, Boomer. One of them missed their target and they booed him. You know why? Because it's the Wings of Blue. If it was the Rings of Red, the Nebraska fans would be cheering. Earlier today, uh, my colleague Boomer Esiason decided to get down on that field there and personally test it at Sun Devil Stadium. His receiver, none other than Bill Cosby. All right, Bill, are you ready? I'm going to throw you my pass. Third and long, I need you to go down and out against the cornerback. One thing. What's that? I want you to throw with my ball. Take your sunglasses off because all right. you're looking too smooth. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, all right, I'm a 90s quarterback, but all right, I'll take I them understand. off. Okay, Bill, okay, let's go, babe. Now, what do you want? Down now, I want you, you want? I want down and out about eight yards, eight okay? Yards. And you got to be perfect, all right? All right. Are you ready? Hike, ready. go. <laughs> now, you got to try one with my ball, Bill. Wait, I think you're better than that. Oh, you think I'm better I than that? I think you're okay. better, but you get, you get the swing of it. Oh, well, one more this? time. Look at this paper. It looks like it's from 1923, Bill. It is. All right, Woodrow are you ready? Wilson was just re-elected. Are you ready? Hike. <laughs> okay, right, we'll now, try your ball. My ball this time. We'll try your ball. All right. Now, you better not drop this ball, Bill. Hey, man, don't threaten me. Are you ready? Yeah. Hike. Eight and cut and... <laughs> Not bad, Bill. All Not right. Bad. That's all right. Yes, indeed. You can play on my team anytime you want. Well, thank you. What team will you be with? Uh, I'm not really sure at this point. This Just is stop. Boomer and Bill saying back to you. <laughs> All right, cause thank you. It's like throwing your press clippings from the past. Well, I want to throw the press clippings away and just throw the football. <laughs> I'll be all right. Coming up, Patty Austin, Glenn Campbell, and Kathy Tricoli with a stirring rendition of our national anthem and the spirit of America. 
Glad you're with us as we continue here from the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl.